Good day everyone. Full credit to this video goes to Seth Robinson at the Robinson Foundries. He did a project like this and I thought it was so cool that I had to give it a try myself. We're going to pour some molten bronze in this sundial seashell and see what we get. First thing I'm going to do is make a small hole with a Dremel tool. That'll allow the air to escape so I can pour the metal in and it won't get stopped up with air pressure. I'm going to rinse it out to make sure there's no sand or any other debris stopping up the inside of the shell. The hole I drilled however seems to be a little bit small, so I decided to drill a little bit bigger hole a little farther up the spiral just to make sure I get a good vent. That seems to be a little better. We'll go with that. I put it in the oven for a while at a low temperature just to make sure I get all the water out. Water and molten metal are a volatile mix. I'm gonna put it in a flask, not to make a mold of it, but just to keep it stable so the metal and the shell stay in place when I pour it. I put a paper towel plug in there just to make sure the sand doesn't go inside the shell. And I did the same with the vent hole. I thought I might just have the parting line go completely over the shell, but this turned out not to be the best idea. I need to have an open channel so as the air and gas are vented through, it has a place to go. So the idea is to just create a channel along the outside edge of the shell to the vent hole so everything can escape. To make the parting line, I just rub a makeup brush and some chalk powder. Some people use talc, but chalk works pretty good. I need to make sure I don't plug off my vent with sand, so I'll just put a little piece of paper towel in there to keep that sealed. Adding the top part of the flask will also allow me to get enough head pressure to really force the metal down into the shell. Think of like hydraulics. When you're pouring metal, there's a hydraulic pressure effect. So the more pressure you have on top, the more it'll force the metal down into the small crevices. So you can see where the paper towel is and it marks where the metal goes in and out. It makes an impression on the other layer so I know exactly where to carve my channels. I found a piece of copper pipe works pretty well. This is where I had to have a little bit of a change of plans. When I tried to pull the cork from the vent out, I realized it was too far in there and I couldn't quite extract it. So I decided to redesign things. Instead of having the parting line go over the shell, I decided to just make the shell part of the parting line. That way I can take it in and out if I need to. So now I can remove both of the plugs and get it set right back where it was. You can see it in there. It's not perfect, but I think it's aligned close enough that it's gonna work. For metal, I'm gonna be making up some tin bronze. Tin bronze is comprised of 88% copper and 12% tin. I always like watching right at the point when the copper starts to melt. 
it kind of starts crumbling away and then turns into a fluid. It's really cool. Copper melts at just under 2000 degrees Fahrenheit and I want to make sure it's several hundred degrees above that before I pour it. I'll skim off any impurities and then I'll add the tin. Tin melts at about 450 degrees Fahrenheit, so a much lower temperature. And it melts almost instantly as soon as I put it in. Just holding it above the flame is enough to let it melt. I really didn't know what to expect when I opened this up, but when I saw it, I was actually really surprised. It's interesting to me that the shell turned this ghostly white color. I didn't expect that at all. But you can also see where there were expansion cracks in the shell and a little bit of metal leaked through. I had expected that the shell would be enough to keep the inner part of the metal and the outer part of the metal separate, but you saw where there were those expansion cracks. The little bit of metal that leaked through was enough to really weld it together, and it was a pain to separate. The shell is so brittle it flakes off pretty easy, but where the metal was welded there I had to do some serious dremel work to get around and flake off the metal. surprising how strongly those little pinholes of metal can hang on to something. Anyone who's taken a geology class knows dilute hydrochloric acid is a way to test for calcium carbonate. Snail shells happen to be made of calcium carbonate, so by soaking it in dilute hydrochloric acid, I can dissolve away all the remaining shell in the small gaps that I can't reach. Seth Robinson used vinegar and to be honest, that's probably a safer way to do it. I'll need to soak it a little bit more later on, but for now I'm going to just scrub as much of the shell as I can off. And I'm going to take a Dremel tool and try to get all these little metal burrs down so it will take a nice polish when it's all done. One of the fastest ways I've found to take away metal is by using a cutoff wheel on a Dremel. It works really well as long as you don't slip and hit something important. Next I'll hit it with a wire wheel. I really love using the wire wheel for cleanup. And one more acid bath. What I can't get with a wire wheel, the sandblaster works great. Last step, a quick polish on the buffing wheel, and then we're done. Overall, I think this is a really cool experiment. It's amazing to think that that was a creature living inside that shell. And now that creature is in the shape of bronze. The beauty of the original shell might surpass what I created in bronze, but still, I think both of them tell pretty interesting story. Don't forget to tell me what you think in the comments, and if you have any other suggestions of experimental casting, be sure to let me know. I'm always interested in what you guys have to say. Thanks again to Seth Robinson for the inspiration for this project, and I really hope you don't mind me taking your idea and trying it myself. Check out some of my other videos, and as always, thanks for watching. 
Come on back for the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.